And welcome everyone to Water is the New Gold. Um, it's a pleasure having you here. Lots of ha things happening, so let me get going. Here it is, Water is the New Gold. And this is a vital, scarce, and recession-proof market, which is a still not at the top, as I was telling you guys, when compared to Bitcoin. It is the 18th and briefing number 102. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move it right along here. We have the uh, usual safe harbor statement. Now, I was struck by this today. What is going on with the ships stacking up in harbor? Oh, Lord. There is a huge influx of these ships. In fact, let me show you some footage that was shot by uh, U.S. Coast Guard. This is right outside the port of uh, Los Angeles, Long Beach. You see in the, in the background, you can see uh, the Palos Verdes Peninsula. This is pretty amazing. So, you know, what's going on here? Well, there is a huge backlog effect of goods coming from China as the economy comes back and people are tending to buy more goods than going to restaurants and services and movies and so forth. So they're buying things and those things are generally coming from China. So it would appear that China is the beneficiary for what's happened for the last year. Look, there's a cruise ship. Of course, they're not running. But uh, now look, oh my God, that port is stacked with 20 and 40 foot containers. Amazing. So hopefully, the, there we go. Look at that. That's pretty amazing. And they're just sitting there waiting. They've had some COVID in the um, longshoremen, but you know only about 800 out of 15,000. So that's not really the issue. Uh, the issue is just a huge amount of incoming business that is just stacked up. And now um, it's causing you know fashion retailers to miss their spring season and so forth. Pretty amazing. Pretty cool, actually. So that's the commercial situation. And it's very, very interesting. So well, let's take a look at what's next. Now, this is a show. Dan Bongino is right wing. This is not a political excerpt. This is an excerpt about business. You'll see in a second. Get ready to hear the truth about America on a show that's not immune to the facts with your host, Dan Bongino. All right, update from sunny Florida. I talked about this yesterday. Folks, we're in a little bit of a mini crisis here in Florida. Not kidding. You, The place is blowing up. You cannot, I live down here. I have to move because we need to expand our studio and I don't have enough space. You can't find a house down here. You Floridians listening, well, you don't want to be ridiculous. You can find a house, but you are going to pay through the nose. I bought our I bought our house in Palm City, our first studio, for about what, 500,000 or something. The house now is fetching like $700,000. I've only been in Florida for 6 years. You can't find a house. People are in, the bidding wars are insane. I have a friend who moved to Boca. She bought her place, I think, five or six months ago. It's an expensive place. The place, the same exact model home is on the market down in her neighborhood for 400000 more than she bought it just in the fall of last year. And to get into the neighborhood, the real estate people aren't even taking new clients unless you're going to buy that day. I'm not kidding. You have to, there's a lottery to get on an, into the neighborhood to bid on the house. It's turning into a little bit of a mini crisis down here. You can't find a house. <laughs> I took a note, but Blaze, you ever eat Blaze pizza? It's like the Chipotle of pizza. I take my daughter there. She loves it. They eat a little dough and you like, it's like the Chipotle of pizza. Like, Give me to some meatballs. And they put it in a thing. As whoever thought of it, it's a great idea. 
I took my daughter to the Blaze P. What does that have to do with anything? Because ladies and gentlemen, we're supposed to be in the middle of a pandemic. Florida's so hot. It's like the pandemic never happened. The place was packed. We couldn't even get in the joint. You couldn't even get in the joint. I ran into my financial advisor there. Great guy. He paid for my pizza. You couldn't even get in the joint. Florida is smoking hot right now. Smoking hot. In fuego. You can't find a house. Businesses are booming. But it is turning into a little bit of a mini crisis because we're not used to this down here. I'm not a lifetime Floridian, but I've been down here six years. The snowbirds usually leave right around Easter because it gets hot in Florida and they go back. The snowbirds aren't even leaving anymore. The place, the traffic down here is getting pretty, pretty heavy too. So <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Bitcoin. Oh Lord. Now this is an example of, uh, I missed this and I know a lot of people who did. And, um, somebody emailed me to, tonight saying, why are you putting in your own two cents? I bought a $10. I'm like, well, then if you bought a $10, then you're a whale. But from, just over one year, it's a 10X, almost 10X uh, increase. Six years ago, you would have taken $10,000 to two, over 2 million. And there are people I know who have done that and much more besides. So does this thing have anywhere to go? Is this gonna get higher? Well, perhaps, but I mean, it's already been such a run, right? It just drives me crazy when I come in late on something like this. Okay. so. That's what's going on with a lot of things. They're already up, right? Real estate in Florida, already hot. If you're in Manhattan, you're, you're in tough luck, but in um, places that are desirable, it's already up. So, you know, um, we just put in a bid for a, for a condo and we were super happy just to get in before the thing went nuts. All right, so let's take a look at this economy, okay? So commodity prices are skyrocketing. Cost of crude oil is way up. and. Nobody's really driving, but 80% up. Real estate, of course, as we've seen, is already hot. Inflation taking off. So I think Bitcoin is hot as a result of that. There's been talk of a crash. And I know that um, the SEC got very angry at um, Michael Burry, the big short investor. He's been warning about market bubbles for months. He's probably right. But, you know, I think they're just going to keep funneling money into the system but the dollar will continue to erode. That's just the way it is. Now that's really bad because of course, inflation hurts the poor and the, the wealthy who own, who own assets tend to do well. It's exactly the opposite of what's supposed to happen, but there it is. So I don't think we're seeing to see a crash crash, but we'll see a loss of tangible wealth. All right, so then, you know, where to go from here? Well. There is massive infrastructure spending for this fall. Uh, some people say September, $2 trillion. Some people say as much as double, $4 trillion. And what does that mean? Well, if you miss the Bitcoin run up, then here's something that's still early on in the game and that is water. Why? They have to keep spending on, people. everybody needs to spend on water and furthermore, the water rates are going up. So they're costing more and they're priced in inflating dollars. And then now they're presumably going to be um, catching up the infrastructure bending, spending. And now this last one is really important because it's how does it speed up? Remember that even though there's money everywhere in the system, credit is actually tough. It's hard for businesses to get loans. It's called hard money. We saw that in the, uh, the uh, Bush-Obama recession where there was a lot of money, but nobody could borrow. Very similar here. So pay as you go is the key. And that's our version of it, of course, as you know, is water on demand. And that is going to enable it to happen fast. That's going to create the, the uh, adoption curve. All right. Here's what's interesting is we're seeing real estate investor migration into water as an asset. Why? Because they actually see this as a better opportunity for themselves. You know that Alfredo Guato, who was interviewed on this show, he's come in for $2 million and he, we're working on his paperwork. He signed a definitive agreement, but it's still subject to approval of the board, but he's committed. Uh, previously, we took $630,000 also in real estate. These are not intended to be spent on pay and so forth. They're intended to be spent on these pay as you go, you know, prepaying these outsourced water systems. And then there's a very large investor who's 
very excited. He's got a hotel he wants to bring in. It's very, very preliminary, but I just heard that that is actually, you know, happening. So good news. There's, there's, there's movement here. So it's really interesting that real estate investors are going into it because it is quote unquote, a new asset. So water demand is, and I want to just summarize this before I go on the next generation of water as a service. It features high speed deals, very high margin because lots of services. We take care of it for you, almost a concierge model, low cost of goods, because when the investor invests directly, then for us, it's in other words, for the, the, the pure money play is very low cost of goods. It creates a whole new asset class and it can grow this tr one trillion industry, which is only treating what 20% or one fifth of the world's water to its potential. Very, very cool. All right. Well, I'm going to share with you a, the new website that we're designing and uh, pull that right up here. So presently what we have is if you look at what we've got here, we've got a water on demand. Um, we have, we've been changing things rapidly. This is moving a bunch of stuff over and let me show you where it's all going. So we created a, a new domain name, originclear.tech. And that is going to hold all of our technology, modular water systems, the website, progressive water treatment, our pool preserver and bronc boost, which are two new products that we've carried at corporate are going to go into progressive water. We've got the lab going on here. We've got our network of licensees, our intellectual property, all that is going into originclear.tech. And then we're deleting a bunch of stuff that's excessive. And here we go in the, the about is unchanged, but let me zero in on what is coming here. All right. So over here we have water on demand and a new whole new tree, which is certifications. When we have money to spend to prepay these systems on a pay as you go basis, well, we want to know that certain machines, companies, and service providers are reliable for that. So we will be certifying them. Of course, we'll start by certifying our own, but Origin Clear as water on demand wants to bring in any water company that, that can meet the requirement. And the subsidiary that is taking the money in is now being called water on demand number one. It'll be the, one, the first one of several of these subsidiaries with that are, their only function is to capitalize these things. Uh, the briefings, newsletter, et cetera, we call it live. And then the news is unchanged. So that's where things are going very, very quickly. And you're going to see it look a lot. The new look is going to be a lot like uh, my friends over at Attention Grabbing Media, AGM, Manuel Suarez just has an amazing uh, agency. And the uh, same people that built this website are going to, we believe, are going to build this other one, this our own, that is. So this gives you a sense it's going to be much more uh, marketing oriented, shall we say, right? So that is where things are going, all kinds of good stuff. All right. So with, uh, with that having been covered, as you can, so just to summarize before I go on and welcome Ken Berenger into the call, because he's got some very important things to say. Commodities are cr going crazy. The dollar is going downhill. There's been a run up already. Stock market, Bitcoin, real estate, you name it. What's at the early stage? Water. And the key is water on demand. Now you're seeing how we're converting our website into this new look. And you'll see a uh, highly focused, very easy to understand website. Our, our website has been like, people go to it and go, well, what do you do? <laughs> no, it will no longer be a question. Okay, so I'm going to welcome Ken. Are you with us? Hey, buddy. Well, thanks for taking time. For I me. have a face. I have a face for radio, they say. Oh, this, <laughs> I will not accept that. Anyway, okay. so the next slide will introduce the next topic, which I think is very, very important. They took a leap of, they took a leap of faith two years ago. How are our key investors doing? Well, I'd like you to give me a report from the front. From the front line with bullets whizzing over my head. Exactly. Um, I can radio in. I can radio this in. So I've had, and I, I said this to you almost incidentally, right? I've had about two dozen conversations in the past maybe week. And um, <clears throat> the common theme was in, in our conversations, I'm, I don't want to get too much into the strategy on a, on a call, but I, I'm kind of talking about what we're doing and, and, and how our kind of early supporters can help. 
when we came into this two two years ago, a lot of folks had basically on the strength of just their faith and of our tenacity alone, they continue. And I had one fellow, and I'll paraphrase. He basically said, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I did this just because I was so far in, I wasn't going to let you guys fail. Right. Okay. And And the conversation I had with them more recently is I said, look, if I told you two, two and a half years ago that standing here today, you know, here's your analysis. You'd be up $280,000 in origin clear in your position. Would you have ever believed? They said, absolutely not. And they said, I don't know how you actually did this. And I've been part of it, but I'm really, really happy you did it. So it's been a, um, it's been a very, very gratifying experience in the last couple of weeks to hear investors go, holy cow, the past is no longer talked about. It, it's basically, so what are we doing tomorrow? You know, it used to be so, you know, how did we get here? Now it's like, wow, how did we get here? You know, it, 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 it just, it, it's just a change of a vocal inflection, but the, the mood is really, really positive. And um, we've got a lot of exciting things that I'm kind of dealing with, you know, kind of um, individually with our investors. And when I, when I kind of, when I lay out what we, where we are right now, what we've been able to accomplish in terms of a company and what we plan on doing in the next 12 months, their eyes light up. And I know this now because I do it on Zoom, which is great. Right? <laughs> so they actually, you know, you can see the eyes light up. And, and it, that's, that's a lot of fun. We spent two years working really, really hard. I remember the first day when I joined, we said, okay, how do we make everyone who got us to this point whole? And we literally spent a year doing that. Um, and, and happy to say that everyone who, who hung in there with us and continued to help us grow are now sitting in a very, very strong position. Uh, and with just a little bit of more forward momentum can be just, I mean, some of these, some of these positions are, have the potential to be life altering if we get a couple more things right. And so far we've got a pretty good batting average in the last year. So lots of happy campers, thankfully. So those are the, what I call the founding investors. And, yeah, um, legacy investors. Exactly. Uh, but you know, can a new investor do well in, in uh, what we're doing? The new investor has probably the, probably the most, it's an enormously generous deal at a time when we don't need to be generous. Uh, we're growing so rapidly. We're becoming so strong. We have interested parties that are talking to us for the first time that would never talk to us. So yeah, the, the answer to your question is this. The, the new investor has just as big an opportunity now as the, the folks that have really kind of shored up their positions. The, the reason that they're in a better position is for one reason only. They may not have as large a position because they haven't been doing it for years, but there's, there's not going to be this, this time loss, you know, this, this, this opportunity loss, like where they're sitting in a kind of a zero sum game for a couple of years. You know, all of our investors in the past two years have been earning eight or 10 or in some cases, 12%. So there's never been no dead money, but it's not, you know, it's not that life faltering. Wow. What we're setting up now can put the today investor in a position in a year that is, you know, the kind of thing you invest in, in a, in a, um, uh, in a new, in, in, in a growth company like ours for. So yeah, the answer is absolutely. So you think it's not too late? Well, no, I, I think where we are right now, um, you know, at a ten million dollar, <clears throat> excuse me. I look at, I, I, so I look at a company like Aqua Ventures, who had a great idea, basically followed almost line, in line with what we did. Um, they had a lot of things we didn't have, and that's because they weren't smarter. It's simply because they were generation one, right? They, you know, those things hadn't yet come up. We've got advantages that they never had, and they got bought out for a billion dollars. We've got technology, we've got software that they don't have, um, and the software component of that got bought out by, bought out by a billion dollars. We don't so believe in, with, in M's. We just do B's now. B. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> millions are rounding errors. I mean, you know. <laughs> You know, you write a check to a million dollars on your way to the deal, right? right. Um, so, so, uh, but that also, but that's also a symptom of just how awash in money Wall Street is. It's true. You know, this, the, the, I think I know where about a trillion dollars of the EIDL and PPP money went. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it didn't go to the guys who haven't fed their kids in a month, right? It, right. it, it went to, unfortunately, it went to a lot of folks that were able to kind of use the system. Uh, to keep themselves flush. Okay, you know, moving beyond that. But they can fund water on demand. Absolutely, absolutely. And and we strongly encourage that. No, but all kidding aside, 
I, I believe right now we're in the strongest position of a company that we've ever been. But also, we're, we're at the end of the beginning. You know, we're, we're literally pivoting to a whole new phase. When this water on demand initiative is truly launched and tr truly formed, we're a completely different company. And I think that if we get to a hundred or so million dollar market cap, I think the people that change lives start to look at us. I, I really think we become something they, that catches their attention. And I think we're ready for it. And I'll be fending off private equity firms trying to take us over. Yeah, you'll be having them call me. Yeah, call, call my guy Ken. <laughs> well, that's wonderful to hear. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, put up your contact info on screen because you've got some very specific things to say to people. Yes. Uh, they, they need to be accredited. Now we do, we are able to work with unaccredited investors um, and that's where your team, you know, Gary and Charles are, are able to sure. step in and help. So uh, unaccredited will be taken care of and it's a very good deal. But um, you have some very specific things to brief people on. We won't be discussing them in this call, but, uh, and you're, nobody can get on your, right now, I think you're scheduling Tuesdays and Wednesday for next week. Uh, yeah, well, no, Tuesday's gone. Oh my God. I think that's a rock band, Tuesday's gone, but uh, yeah, <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday's gone, I think. Yeah, no, I think you're right. So uh, bottom line is uh, people should just put oc.go slash Ken in their browser and book a call. Oh, interesting panelist, interesting panelist comment from Rick. Hey, Rick. Ricardo Garcia, I'd like to vouch for the fact that it is possible to start as an unaccredited investor and become one. Yes, Ricardo Garcia um, was not quite accredited, but he worked his way through the Regulation A offering and then managed to become one of our accredited investors, a real success story. And that Ken can tell you about if you're, if you're an almost accredited person. Right, you got to be um, close. JRW, good evening, Alexander, thanks. Daryl Polston, thanks for, for jumping in, Daryl. Interesting dynamic coming for water, ramp up is coming for hydrogen, using electrolyzers. And of course, when you talk about electrolysis, you're talking about water, it's true. Frankly, I see that as a secondary opportunity for water uh, just by volume. You know, People forget that most of the water being used is actually agricultural. Bruce Ferguson, I'm not sure which Bruce that is, but he's saying, hey, Ken. And then um, JRW says he has a, I have a face and voice for text. So um, <laughs> at least you got the radio voice there, Ken. So phone numbers, there's the uh, 800 number, call Ken or just, you know, email investor at clear.com. Click on oc.co slash Ken. All right. Now, Rich would like to know if there's going to be anything in the future for OC regarding water chain. Very important. We need to focus on the real world implementation of outsourced water treatment on demand. And that is what we're focusing on. Having put in that layer of reality, we can then put the uh, abstract that, that activity into a smart contract environment. I showed you on a few uh, shows ago how complex the, the ecosystem is in the water world. Well, all that can be turned into automated smart contracts, Ethereum style, uh, using a, a crypto-like water chain. So all you got to do here is uh, really implement. We want to implement, not just in the US. And then of course, I do believe we will do the crypto, but you won't be hearing me go on and on about it because we want to keep our focus. Yeah. Wayne wants to know what will it take to get on and stay on the NASDAQ? And stay on is a very good point you're making, Wayne, because we could get on the NASDAQ today with a little bit of financial engineering, but we wouldn't last. What we need to do is to gain assets. It's an asset game. We need at least $4 million in assets. And that's in addition, that's after accounting for our liabilities. Well, how do we do it? By these machines that we don't sell. We put them out there on a rental or pay-per-use basis. Well, they remain our assets. And so the more money we raise into these um, subsidiaries, water on demand number one, water on demand number two, water on demand number three, each of them being multi-million dollar uh, accounts, we're gonna be able to count these things as assets and that's key to the ASDAQ. The second part of course will be the fact that pre-funding water systems is going to make our own sales take off. You, last week, uh, you know, Dan Early, our chief engineer told us that one third of his deals at Modular Water Systems could be done almost right away using a you know, prepaid option 
And that means uh, he's got about a $12 million um, forecast of a pro prospective business. So, you know, that's $4 million. And it, so it basically doubles our revenues very, very quickly. So that's pretty interesting. Now, great, what is the cost of the share when you start to date? I'm not sure I understand that, Alejandro. But I think I, think I know where you're going with that. Alexander, if you could call in, it'd be wonderful. And we can discuss that specifically because I think I, I know where you're going. It, we, we, we structure it differently. We don't sell you a cheaper share at all. We haven't, we, haven't, uh, we haven't sold common stock for years now. We put you into a preferred share with a 200% redemption. You get double your money back, et cetera, et cetera. And the price is the price later on. If the price is five cents, 10 cents, whatever it is, that's how you get your conversion. I think I've answered the question, but Alexander, please feel free to schedule a call. Okay. So, and uh, I often, I often oversimplify by saying you, you, you're investing as an insider investor with tremendous advantages with, a, you know, with, 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 with a lot of kind of perks and benefits built into the uh, unit offering. Well, you're, you're, you're getting a VIP position because you're sitting on the side earning dividends and you can jump in and grab stock anytime you like. It's the best of both worlds. Right. Right. Next week, Modular Water Systems is on fire. I got a briefing earlier this week. The amount of deals they have cooking that, you know, Dan Early is worried about the ability of Progressive Water, our Texas operation to process all that. Now, not to worry because we have other water companies we can put business onto. And besides which, Mark Stevens is a fantastic manager. But this is good news. And we're going to cover that in greater detail next week. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Ken, for jumping on. I have another chat uh, saying, here we go. JRW has been following along for a while, and he'll be talking to you, Ken. Everyone, it was fantastic joining you again. I'm loving every single one of these weekly briefings. Do join us next week. Thank you all. Good, good night, night and have a great weekend. Thank you.